What's going on everybody? So we have here a Zycar Exo Cutter. Um, these are pretty popular. Um, you can spend anywhere from like $80 to $120 on these. I don't know the exact pricing, um, but they're an extremely popular cutter. They have a lifetime warranty on them, and because they have a lifetime warranty, people buy them because you can take them into pretty much any shop and have them worked on or repaired. However, um, for the do-it-yourselfers, um, the home gamers, as it were, um, these do get gummed up, um, primarily because if you notice on the face of this uh, machine clamshell, there's openings where you can see um, the gear profiles, and on the reverse side you can see the gear profiles and the spring, and then right here there are two plastic bushings for the blades to ride on, and these can get gummed up with tobacco and dust and all of the other nasty things that are in our pockets or wherever wherever we store these. So I'm just going to do a quick video on the teardown and reassembly. I'm not going to fully disassemble it because if you can avoid fully disassembling it, that's to your best interest. Um, you really don't want to take these all the way apart. They're a bitch to get back together. I really don't want to take this one apart right now because I have it working really nicely and um, it's really not in my best interest to take it apart and potentially mess it up again, but there aren't any guides anywhere um, on how to do this, not online, there's no um, YouTube videos, there's nothing. There's no guidance on this and that's because these have a lifetime warranty. But um, for people who are wondering if they have the ability to just clean these up at home, um, this is a this is a good guide for that and I think that it needed to be made. You can blast um, some cleaner lubricant preservative or uh, Hopi's 9 or you know whatever kind of gun lubricant um, you want into these crevices. Something that's pressurized and in a can to kind of uh, blast these gear surfaces and clean out any junk that's in there. But when I take this apart on the inside you're going to see all of the casting surfaces where things can get gummed up in there and over time um, you're going to lose the functionality of this and it's not going to be able to pop open or close as easily. So we're going to go ahead and take apart this clamshell and I'll show you what's going on here. The first thing that I'm going to tell everybody before you take this apart, do not remove all the screws, okay? This is the back side of the cutter. We can tell it's the back side A because the lettering isn't on the blades and B because of this spring on the upper section. This is the bottom of the cutter. So since this is a clamshell, there are little brass inserts, I think they're brass anyway, and there's two screws on either side, and they screw into this brass bushing, and there's red Loctite on those. So each screw holds part, half, it, it threads halfway into that brass bushing. And so on the back side, where we're gonna keep everything together, you don't need to remove these screws. It's not necessary. If we go to the front side, uh, you're going to notice that the trigger button's on the left, the writing's there, no springs. We can remove these screws. In order to do that, you need a T6 bit, if that focuses, probably not. You need a T6 bit. Um, I have a little Harbor Freight set that you can pick up for, I don't know what it is, it's like less than $5 at Harbor Freight. That comes with all of your Torx screwdrivers, uh, your flatheads, um, your Phillips, uh, your commons, anything you'd possibly want, even uh, the hex. Uh, even the hex drive ones, and then it comes with, I'll actually show this kit because we got it out here. It comes with an extension bar, and then it also comes with a flex drive. And the flex drive is extremely handy. Um, I would pay the entire price of this kit just for that flex drive, because you can get in and out of places that are just really ridiculous. Um, so yeah, this kit's definitely worth it. You're going to have all the torque sizes you need. I think it goes up to like T25, maybe 30. But what we have right here, we just need a T7. So we can go ahead and remove these screws. Actually, before we do that, before you take these screws all the way out, it's going to be a good idea to pop this open because we're going to work on this from the 
open position, not the closed position. And I'll address that before I take out these final two screws. All of the assembly and disassembly on this cutter needs to be done from the open position because the spring tension that allows this to pop open when we release this button is created by this spring in the bottom right there, okay? And the second, the very second that you try and take this apart together with it all compacted, it's going to blast apart and you don't want that to happen. And there's also no way you're going to be able to create the spring tension on that to pull this all the way around to get the gears timed and lined up with that spring extended all the way. It's just not going to happen. So when we reassemble this, we reassemble this from the open position. And that's the only way to make this work. And it can be a bit of a bitch, I'm not going to lie. See our blades are going to fall out, we can take this off. So a couple of things that we're going to notice first off, we have a pin here that fell out and we have a spur gear. So this mechanism consists of four spur gears, they're centered powdered metal, um, powdered metal gears, pot metal. Um, you can see that they have, if it focuses, they have an involute profile which just means that they're rounded, um, they're not exactly straight. That meshes against the blades and drives these blades, or rather, the blades drive these. So the easiest way to think of this is as a rack and pinion, um, where these gears, which are fixed on these shafts, function as the pinions, and each blade has a pinion on either side, and these function as the rack. Um, if I put this gear in here, we can go ahead and take note of some phenomena that are occurring here. Um, since each blade is driven by these gears, if we actually set these gears onto this right here right now, to the best of our ability, you'll notice that um, they do not actually line up. So it's not, um, the, the taller gear here is lower and this gear is higher and this higher gear is much shorter. It's got a much shorter profile and it drives along this top blade and this top blade drives against the taller gear back here Whereas the taller gear down here um, is down here for this blade, and then the shorter gear is moved down on this on this blade, so it's shifted, it's offset just by a little bit, and that's what allows the blades to drive simultaneously across one another because they're offset. So that's something that we got to pay attention to when we're taking apart this thing and putting it back together. A couple of things right off the hop. If you are going to disassemble and clean this cutter, my recommendation is that you do not, I repeat, do not disassemble it any further than this. Um, if you do disassemble it further than this, you're going to run into issues. I'm just going to let you know that right from the get-go. You're going to run into issues, so do not try it. Um, what we can see here, down at the bottom, is there is a a gear that is um, it's a circular gear but it doesn't have a middle it's it's cut out here so it's along the edges so you can kind of see where these these teeth are on the inside right in here that spring is on the bottom in here and it lies beneath this plastic bushing it actually um, has a little hook a little hook in here and then it rides around in here and then if you notice this little pin right here is where the spring attaches. So that spring is underneath that gear underneath this bushing and it attaches to there. In this current position, there's no tension on it. But when we close this cutter, this gear right here is going to um, move in this direction. It's going to move clockwise in this direction until about here. The reason that I don't recommend disassembling it further than this is because you're going to run into a whole lot of issues 
um, that's just not worth. Um, this top part doesn't need to be disassembled any further than this. You'll notice that the trigger, for lack of a better word, um, this comes off. Here we have um, our primary drive gear, which is a spur gear, but it has a cam lobe on top. The notable thing about the cam lobe, and it's really difficult to see because it's pretty tiny and I can't get it to focus, but there is a timing mark right here. And this little timing mark is what gives us the indication of where this gear needs to rest um, in the open position. So if you do take this apart any further, you want to index this cam gear um, beginning where you have the first set of gear teeth on this ring. And so your timing mark should be here and you should twist the um, gear on the bottom just enough to have enough teeth to contact right here. And that'll give us travel length as this is moving counterclockwise because this will move along these teeth. So your timing mark needs to be here. When we put this back together, you notice that there's a little re a little return spring. Um, it's pretty chintzy, but there's a return spring right here. And so when we take our trigger, we need to insert it below there. And then there is going to be a little dowel pin, um, an alignment pin for it to rest on. So as we notice, um, this doesn't travel back any farther than right here. And then as this moves counterclockwise, this cam will turn counterclockwise. As this gear is moving clockwise, this one will turn counterclockwise. And eventually, when we get it all the way back together and we close it, this will rest um, right in here. And it'll act as a stop, and it'll hold that in place. Once, it, once this uh, trigger, the little trigger bar here, indexes against this profile on the cam, it won't be able to move. And then when we pull the trigger, the action here will move that backwards, allowing slippage and it'll allow the cam to um, spin around all the way until it's bottomed out. And so that's what gives us a spring action. This is what holds, holds the cam gear in place. And then when you press the button, um, all of the spring tension will release and the blades will come out. So for the reassembly phase here, since we're not gonna disassemble this, you want to clean it as best you can with all these pieces intact. If you do need to disassemble it further, just make sure that you have the timing timing mark facing directly downwards towards the bottom of the metal clamshell. And um, everything else that's in here can rest. So the only pieces which shouldn't be there are the blades. You take the blades out, you can clean the blades. Um, you can sharpen the blades yourself if you feel so inclined. And then on the second half of the clamshell, you're going to have that shaft and the final centered spur gear right there. And this is going to want to come off of this shaft and it's a little bit of a bitch to align. You can do this a couple of different ways. You can try taking the shaft out of this bottom clamshell. It'll be stuck into here, but if you use a pair of pliers like these, you can pull that shaft out. You can put the gear onto the shaft and try and have all of the gears and all of the shafts in the bottom of this housing, which is inefficient if you ask me. Um, or you can just do what I do and fiddle and fuck around with it for a little bit and leave the gear and the shaft in this half, leaving this bushing intact. So the only three pieces that are attached to this top clamshell are the shaft, the gear, and the bushing. Blade alignment. So you're going to want to pay really close attention to how this works. You'll notice if I put this one in here that this is where this blade indexes this half. Um, this is where it rests, so we know that this part with the XO is still on top. That's how you're going to keep track of it. But remember I said when we're assembling and disassembling this, we're always assembling and disassembling it from the cutter open position. And the cutter open position, if you know your light or you know your cutter very well, is with the blade at the outside edge of the circle like that. And because we know that it's the same for the top one, we can index this on this cam about where the edge of the cutter would be, which is right there. So this is how we're going to reassemble this cutter. To get this back together, all you have to do is align the shaft and the gear here with the little port here, the receiver hole. 
and if you can index the shaft and the cam right there, the clamp shall go back together and all you have to do is screw it back together. This is an extremely tedious process. It's honestly not very fun. Um, you kind of have to hold everything together. I recommend keeping this in your um, right hand and then bringing it down as close as you can. You can put this, the trigger part, first together as best you can and you're going to notice that those shafts will align and the blades will knock out. So this is definitely very trial and error. You kind of got to put this back together the best that you can in any way that you see fit. Um, for this one, for the purposes of the video, I am going to pull that shaft out of the bottom end and stick it in here just to try and give myself as much of a chance of getting it back together as physically possible. Um, the only problem with this is that this is not going to be aligned properly, so you're going to kind of have to shove it in when you do get it back together. But it shouldn't be too big of a problem, um, as long as you know that this open part of the clamshell has to go where the trigger is. If you can get it evenly on here, starting with the shafts on the bottom, and you kind of work your way forward like that, just like that. We should be good to go, and then if I do this, you can see we got our trigger action back together, and actually I don't even have to put it back together. You can see we've retained all of our action there. And then all you have to do is put these four screws in here. Like I say, there's a lot of, there's a lot of different ways you can take this apart and put it back together. This is just the easiest way to do it. I would recommend doing it this way because it's going to be the quickest and easiest. I recommend not disassembling it further than um, I just showed in the video because if you do disassemble it any further, it's just going to be uh, a knuck and fight mare, honestly. There is red Loctite on these screws. Um, I won't even be able to show you because, oh, maybe I can. You see there's a little red mark. There's red Loctite on these. But um, because of the bronze bushings that are in here, I really just don't think that it's necessary to try and mess around with cleaning that Loctite off and putting new Loctite on. It's really not that big of a deal. Everything will be held together pretty well here. When you do take this apart, I recommend using gun cleaner and some metal brushes and then maybe some lubricant um, to get everything kind of cleaned up. The gears are centered powder metal, um, so they do like grease because the grease will impregnate it very easily because the grain structure of that pot metal is is not very dense, um, it's not compact, so they will take grease very easily, but obviously um, grease doesn't really function until it warms up. So you can impregnate it and you can reduce a little bit of that friction. Uh, white lithium would work good here, um, graphite would be um, an exceptional way of doing that, but honestly just good old fashioned gun cleaner, any basic oil that can sit on these gears, and then if you want to run some uh, WD-40 inside of these ports every once in a while to clean it out, which is, I imagine what these are for, is to kind of blast it out of there. Um, the only problem that you run into is, obviously any of you who know these cutters, if you do oil them, you'll get oil on the blades, and that will transfer to your cigar cap, which doesn't bother me, but it's not, it's not the best. So, obviously it's best to try and avoid that. So you can blast this with WD-40. Um, to clean it out, but when you do, I recommend using a good gun cleaner to just clean it off, and if you can keep it clean, um, you don't have to worry too much about oiling it, because once we get it back together, you'll notice it's really happy. It's not binding up anywhere. It goes, pinches back together real easy, no problems. Um, everything's nice and shiny again. I've had this thing for, I want to say... I don't even mean, know. It's probably six months. I've had this six months, and it's already gotten a lot of use on it. So these do take abuse. Um, after about half a year, I did decide that it needed to come apart and go back together because there was so much gunk inside. But um, I had this all the way apart, completely apart, and it took me a couple hours to figure out um, how the gear train went back together. So number one thing is making sure that that timing mark um, on the cam gear uh, is pointed directly downward and once you have that figured out everything should be good to go it should be really easy to get back together um, just don't disassemble it all the way 
that's that's the number one thing. Don't take the screws out of the back. Don't try messing with the spring in the bottom. It'll just give you too much trouble and you'll you'll hate your life and you'll just try and send it back to Zycar and they'll be like, why is it disassembled? Why isn't it working? I don't know. I haven't dealt with them personally, but um, yeah, this is this is a guide if you're trying to just disassemble it and do a little bit of light cleaning. It's no trouble to get it taken apart and put it back together. You only need one tool. You just need um, a T6 or a T7, which was it? it's T6, to uh, take it apart and put it back together. But overall, pretty easy. Not as complicated as it might look. Um, so don't be intimidated by it. Um, so absolutely feel free to take this apart and do a little bit of light cleaning. Um, it's a lot easier than sending it off and then waiting weeks or months to get it back. Um, or you can take it into your local tobacconist and see if they can just replace it for you on the spot. But again, if you're a if you're a do it do it yourself or like me, this is a much quicker and much easier option. And I wanted to provide everybody with a little bit of a visual guide on how to do that because there's no guidance online. But anyway, I uh, appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day and uh, light one up and smoke one and uh, have a great year.